Hello everyone and welcome to you all. In this video, I'm going to talk about the has on filter function of the DEX query and I will demonstrate its use case with an example that I have over here. So this is the sales data of one particular salesperson across eight months uh, and the data reflects the sales that have been done across each of the months and their targets. So what we want to do is that number one, we want to know the name of the months where the sales exceeded the targets and number two, we also want to calculate the total number of months where the sales numbers exceeded the target numbers. So what I'll do is I have a Power BI desktop application open over here and number one, I will want to import this Excel file onto this Power BI application. So I click on get data, I will go to Excel option and I will click on this file. Now while importing it, it will ask me whether I want to load the data or want to transform the data. And since this is a very simple example where we don't have a complex data source, there's no need to transform the data. As you can see, the data is exactly the replicated version of what we have over here. So we'll just click on load and it will load the data and we can see the query that we wrote or that we run on the right hand side as soon as it's loaded. There you go. So if I click on edit query, you can see that this is the exact replica that we have over here in this Excel file. Perfect. So moving on, let's just import. Click on matrix we have over here. I'll put the months in the rows and the sales as well as the targets into the value column. Just bring it in the mid and as you can see we have the exact replication of what we had over here. So delving into example now right uh, what I want to do is that for the months where the sales exceeded the target numbers I want to label them as one and for the months where the sales did not exceed the target numbers I would want to label them as zero. So let's write a measure for this. I will right click on sheet one. I will click new measure. Let's just remain it as it is measure. And I want to, I want, so I would write an if condition, right? The idea is that if the sales are greater than the targets, label it as one. And if the sales are less than targets, label it as zero. So I'll translate this statement into a DAX query. I'll click on if. Calculate some sales are greater than calculate some targets so just label it as one else label it as zero. Now I would import this measure into the value section of this metric and as you can see we have the ones and zeros. Now I want to have a, highlight one issue over here. As you can see the labels are being labeled properly. For the months where we have the sales number x and the target numbers we're getting the ones and for the months where we where the sales are not exceeding the target numbers we are having the corresponding zeros but the problem lies in the total as you see over here we get a zero instead of the sum of the ones that we get over here. So in effect, this should have been four, but we get a zero over here. And this is because the condition that we wrote over here is being evaluated for each of the rows that we have for the months, as well as for the total one as well. So in the total, we have the sales number 3800, which is not exceeding the target numbers we have over here which is why we are getting a zero that we have wrote over here. So this is not the desired outcome, right? Uh, what we should get here is the total number of the months with the sales number X and target numbers. And therefore there should be in this example, a four over here instead of the zero. Now this is where the hazard filter function comes into play. We want to, the idea is that we want to distinguish this particular row to the other rows that we have over here. And this is why we use, we will use the has on filter. Now I will change this, the measure that I have over here 
I will label this particular query as a variable. Let me just label it as variable check. And let me write the, ha the has on query now. So the idea is the same. I will check if there is a filter on the months, right? So the total is not included in the months column, right? So I want to distinguish it with the months that we have over here. So I'll click in if, if we have a filter on the month, which is when we have values corresponding to this month, what I'll do is, I'm sorry, so it just distinguished. I'll do a check, which is exactly what we did previously. And when it's not any of the months, we want to do something else, right? We want to actually sum the ones that we had. But before I do that, let me just tell you if the has one filter that we have wrote over here is actually working on that. So I'll just take a random number, let's say 777, right? And I will see whether this is actually working or not. So as you can see, we have over here, right? When the, the months had a filter on them, which means for each of the, the values from August to September, it evaluated check, which is nothing but the query that we wrote over here. So we got the ones and zeros. And when there was no filter applied on the month, which means that we're talking about this row, the total one, we got what we wrote over here, which is 777. So taking another random number, you can see that we got a random number. So what we want to do is that instead of this random number that we wrote over here, we want to sum these particular ones that we're getting over here. So we're writing, so we would write a query where it actually sums the ones instead of comparing the total sales against the total targets. So what I'll do is I'll use the sumx function, which for each of the values of the sales month, will evaluate this particular check that we have written over here. So I'll do is I'll click on, I'll go to the sumx function for each of the values of the month I will again write this query. So calculate some sheet one sales. It's greater than calculate some sheet one targets. we get a one, else we get a zero. Just make sure that you're very careful with the parenthesis that we have over here, right? And as you can see, we get a four. So this is why, this is where the has one filter comes into play. What we did was that before we wrote just this one particular query, where it just for each of the rows, what it did was it compared this condition, where it compared the sales numbers with the target numbers. And for the numbers where the sales exceeded the targets, it gave me a one. And this is why I got a zero over here. Now what I did is the has one filter, it tells me that for the months where we have the an eligible month's value, which is from August to September, just do me a check, which is nothing but what we wrote previously. And for the others, and the other is nothing but this total row over here, give me this, which is nothing but summing what the ones that we get over here. So this is very useful, right? Uh, this is a very simple example to demonstrate the hazard filter function. Uh, it has numerous use cases, but the idea is the same to make sure that we write different queries to distinguish different rows from one particular table. So let me know if you have any questions uh, relating to hazard filter in the comments below. I look forward to answering them. 
uh, and thank you for your time i will get back to you with a latest video a new video next time uh, targeting a new application or a new function of the dex see you then bye bye